In my opinion, there are two types of athletes. Ones who understand the grind and ones who don't. The one who knows how to grind realizes the importance of sacrificing every day to put time towards their craft. They wake up and go to the gym even when their body is sore. There are athletes who understand what it takes to succeed and there are athletes that don't. From a young age, I felt like the idea of grinding clicked immediately. The idea that you could create an entire image for yourself based on work ethic alone motivated me. It was never about the fame, the notoriety, or the accolades for me. I simply just loved playing, and more importantly, outworking my competition. My journey to playing professional soccer is definitely unique, and I think it's worth sharing. My name is Eric Leonard, and this is my story. I grew up in Palatine, Illinois, where I started my youth soccer playing for a team called Palatine Celtic. It was my first travel team I made in my hometown. After spending about a little less than a year there, my coach met with me and my family and said, as good as your development has been from Celtic and as great as our team was that year, he believed that my long-term growth would be better facilitated at a club called Soccer's FC Chicago. As much fun as I was having with my friends at Celtic, I knew that I wanted to go the farthest I could with soccer, and so I deferred to his opinion. One week later, I found myself trying out for the Soccer's FC Chicago U10 team. For the next four years, I found myself thrown into what seemed like the first step of my grinding process. With Soccer's FC Chicago, I had practiced five days a week for two hours in games around the country on the weekend. In terms of sacrifice, this was a big wake-up call for me. Luckily, it never seemed like one though. Every time I stepped onto the field, I was happy to be there. I got to play for some of the top coaches around the country, including the owner of the organization, David Richardson. The person I am, the player I am without you, um, the other coaches, um, Ahmed, Bailey, Oleg, and the other, you know, some of the other ones I'm missing, but I think it's been such a cool experience to grow up in a club and been here all 10 years. I haven't switched clubs. I've been at the same, same place and I get to still come back and train. As I continued to grow as a player over the next couple years, I started to realize the value of grinding. It really clicked when I made varsity as a freshman at 14 years old. Every day I had to play against guys who were bigger, stronger, and faster than me. I owe a lot of my development to a coach and friend named Steve Keller, who never babied me on the field, even as a freshman. He constantly demanded the most of me, even if I was one of the better skilled guys on the team. It's very rare to find a coach who puts focus on the success of his team, but also with the future success of a player. Although I was only able to play two years of high school soccer, every day Steve Keller devoted his time to help me get to the next level. And if you've watched any of my past videos on the three secrets for success or mastering your mentality, you know how important it is to have a powerful belief system in your life. Over those four years of high school, a majority of my time was spent playing for the Soccer's FC Chicago Academy team. After talking with my parents, we decided the best place for me to get noticed in terms of college recruiting would be playing for one of the country's top leagues for youth soccer called the USSDA, or the United States Soccer Developmental Academy. I made the Soccer's FC Chicago U16 Academy team, where I played for three years, traveling across the country on weekends to play the best of the best when it came to youth soccer. The next phase of my grinding process, I knew I would have to sacrifice a lot of my social life if I wanted to get recruited by top college soccer programs. But one thing that is so important about the grinding process that people seem to forget is that even if you stand out and you're playing well, you still need to work on your goals off the field. That meant spending hours researching which schools I was interested in, going to based on coaching staff, style of play, level of soccer, academics, and other various details that would prove to be important for my decision making. 
I went to college combines early enough that I decided to finally become a Butler Bulldog at the end of my sophomore year of high school. Although signing for a top Division I program with amazing coaches Paul Snape and especially Adam Brew was a big step in my career, I'll spare you the details of this signing because what is really important comes next. So I just committed to play college soccer as a sophomore. That means I can coast through the next two years of high school, right? I can take my foot off the gas and relax because I'm good enough to play college soccer right now. Even at the age of 16 years old, I had a different mentality. I'll let my friend Jocko Willing tell you how I felt about that. So I'll hear people say, if you believe it, then you can achieve it. And the problem with that is they're leaving out the most important part of the equation. And that part is work, action, actually doing something. That's what you have to do to achieve anything. Yeah, you gotta believe it, but you better get the work done. See, the most important part about GBA ethos is the grind. There is no believe and achieve in GBA without grinding. Regardless of if I ended up playing professionally or not, this was one of the most important parts of my career. Do I coast because I've made it? Or do I continue to grind and get better every single day so I cannot work my competition? This was my mentality at 16 years old. I may not have had the same talent as some of the other boys my age, but I was willing to roll up my sleeves and sacrifice time to get better. So that's what I did for the next two years. I grinded. And in the fall of 2014, I came in sharp and fit to Butler my freshman year. I started every season game, played almost every minute. I beat out my competition. I made it onto the Big East Rookie Team of the Year. And then I tore my ACL in the last game of the season. See, points like this in my career are the reason why I think my story is worth telling. You see, I don't really care about the Big East All-Rookie Team or the fact that I'm a Division I college athlete or whatever else looks good on my resume. Because after an injury like this, an injury that has ended many athletes' careers, I had to make a decision. So you see, I had to ask myself a very, very simple question. Yes or no answer. Am I willing to grind? And when I made that decision to fight through 10 months of rehab, three hours of therapy every single day, that's when I knew I wanted to play professional soccer. You see, when you commit to the grind 100%, you kind of get a chill that goes throughout your body because you know at that moment, whatever goals, dreams, whatever you set out to accomplish, nothing is going to stand in your way. And so I went back to the drawing board. As I continued to get healthy, I mapped out what it would take for me to play professional soccer. Here's what it took. Starting a journal where every morning I woke up writing the following. One step closer, to playing professional soccer. Taking 20 credits as a double major and division one athlete every semester while doing a full summer school load every year to make myself eligible for graduation a semester early come 2017 where I would hopefully get picked up in the MLS draft. That was the goal. And so the next three years of college, I put my head down and I grinded. I got healthy that next year and Captain Butler to its first Big East Championship in 2016 first conference title in 2017 and into the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament in 2017, which is the farthest the soccer program has made it in Butler history. I stayed on top of school so I was ready to graduate a semester early as well. I did everything I had set out to do. After my last semester at Butler, I even went to three MLS combines to give myself the best chance of getting drafted. I did everything I set out to do. I had committed to the grind 100%. And so I went back home to Chicago for that weekend where my family and I watched the MLS draft live. It started at 10, but I was all ready to go around 8.30. Once they started announcing the names, my eyes were glued to the TV for the next four hours. And it's not like they announced the names every 15 seconds. Teams have to take time to think about their pick and or trade picks for allocation money. So it would probably take about five to seven minutes before each name was read aloud. I listened as friends and former teammates of mine were drafted in the first two rounds on Friday. After the roughly 30 picks had been called out, I didn't lose hope. There were still two more rounds that would be announced on Monday. 
I happened to drive down to Butler for the weekend because I was training with a few players down there who were getting ready for their professional seasons. Monday came around fairly quick. Similarly, I hooked up my laptop to my friend's TV at around noon this time, and I waited for the next 30 or so names to get put out on the screen. I watched for another three hours as people who I knew were drafted and I was not. And as the last name was called, the MLS commissioner wrapped up the ceremony and that was it. I took five minutes to feel sorry for myself. I knew I had made the sacrifices and had done everything in my power to make it. And then I laughed to myself. Because when has my journey ever been a straight path? And so I asked myself a very simple question. Yes or no answer. Am I willing to grind? And as soon as I made my answer, I went back to the drawing board. I called up a former coach and mentor by the name of Brett Hall. Brett Hall is one of the most well-known names in the soccer world for his professional career for the Chicago Sting, his coaching of the women's national team, and his coaching style. He is, as you would call, a grinder. It would take an entire video to talk about how much Brett has impacted my journey to professional soccer, both on and off the field. Brett coaches a semi-pro team called Bridges FC that he travels to Europe with every summer. Every winter since I was 12, I come back and train with Brett to get prepared for club, college, and even now my professional career. You see, as soon as he answered the phone, he didn't even talk about the draft. He's all about the next step because as a grinder, he understands the GBA mindset. So we weren't looking into the past, we were looking at what's next, the drawing board. After he made a couple calls, he told me there was a professional team that was interested in me over in Australia. It was a team that prided themselves in their technical ability, something I desperately needed to improve. We talked about it for an hour, and then one week later, I found myself boarding a 27-hour flight to Gold Coast, Australia, where I started my journey to play professional soccer for the Narain Eagles. That next year in Australia, I spent every day focused on the goal at hand, one step closer to playing professional soccer in the U.S. I loved every second of my time in Australia, but I was there on a mission. Rumors from old coaches of mine were that one of the reasons I did not get picked up in the U.S. was that I wasn't as technically sharp as some of the other guys. I loved hearing that, fuel to my fire, and so I grinded every day to get technically sharp. I worked with the club's technical coach, Gary Scott, who put me through session after session to get me prepared for upcoming tryouts I had back in the U.S. And by the end of the eight-month season, my touch had improved, my technique had become sharper, and I ended up winning the Gold Coast Player of the Year. And within a week of the season ending, I was back on that 27-hour flight heading home for an invite combine for a new team forming in the USL called Forward Madison FC. A man by the name of Peter Wilt, another renowned name in the soccer world and founder of not only Ford Madison, but of the Chicago Fire and Indy 11, reached out to me and said I should go to their invite combine. He said that the new coach, Daryl Shore, was someone who he thinks would connect with my grinding playing style. And so I attended the Ford Madison combine on December 7th, 2019. And on December 15th, I signed my first professional contract in the United States for Ford Madison FC. I owe so much of my success to Peter Wilt, Daryl Shore, Neil Halavity, and the owners of Madison, and especially Connor Galoya, for giving me the opportunity to showcase my talent at the professional level. And the grinding process didn't stop there. My first year at Ford Madison, I had to earn my starting spot on a team of former MLS veterans and top championship players. My competition was against players who represented their national team at the highest level of soccer. If I wanted to play at all, I was going to have to do something every day, every practice, to stand out and show the coaching staff I deserved to be on that field. And for the last two years, that's what I've done. I've put my head down and I've grinded. I'm the only player in Ford Madison history to have played every game, something that I do not take for granted. And as I start my third season with Ford Madison with our new coach, Carl Craig, a very intelligent tactician and coach, I'm super excited to pick up where I left off. My journey isn't over. I still want to play in the MLS. So as I report to preseason in the next couple of weeks, I've had to ask myself a very, very simple question that I want to ask you guys now. Yes or no answer. Are you willing to grind? Because if you are, I'll see you guys at the drawing board.
give away at the back. Here's Micheletto, and it's blocked away. There, he gets it wide for Demet. Fighting with Eric Leonard. Leonard able to clear the way. 